Hello and welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be making a 1950s slash 60s uh, classic Italian bucket seat. Now, this all came about after seeing a post on Instagram where somebody made uh, a 50s uh, racing seat uh, for a, a Ferrari. Now, I've made a few of these at work and I've repaired quite a few. And um, I thought, actually, it's kind of inspired me to make one on the channel. Uh, using the planishing hammer. Now I haven't used this properly, only on little jobs, uh, since I got it about a year ago. So this is a perfect opportunity to sort of do it in an Italian style because they're very well known for using their power hammers uh, to shape the panels. Obviously, I know this isn't a power hammer, it's a planishing hammer, but it works in the same way. So instead of wheeling the panel, we're gonna add shape uh, using this hammer form. So I'll explain all that as we go along and hopefully it turns out to be a cool video. Um, I've got an idea in my head, I've got a pattern from a seat and um, I'm just gonna wing it and see how it turns out and uh, hopefully you enjoy the video. So stick around and we'll see what it ends up like. Okay, so these are my patterns that I copied off the other seat, obviously center line and these are my fold lines or where I'm gonna put my uh, radius bends to start off um, the shape. Um, so that, this is the back, and obviously this is the bottom area, literally where your bottom goes. So that is my patterns. Um, the piece of alley I'm using is 1.5, and actually, believe it or not, this is a bit of scrap that was outside the front of somebody's house, and uh, said free to collection, so I thought, why not? It's a decent piece, hardly got any marks on it. And something like that would probably cost me, I don't know, at least a hundred quid, probably a bit more. So if I can make some use out of it, it's definitely worth it. Okay, simply just gonna put a slight uh, bit of shape through here. This is just gonna form the back, just the sides, so it comes round. We start shaping this on the planishing hammer, but this is a good starting point just to get that bit of shape initially round. So all I'm gonna do, I've got my center of my radius marked there. Just gonna put it through the rollers. The rollers are completely flat. The back is uh, dropped. There's hardly any pressure actually uh, on the rollers. So I'm literally just gonna wind it through to the center, apply a little bit of pressure down, and then just roll it back out and that's just gonna start putting that initial bit of shape in. I'm just gonna roll it back up through the center and do that until I'm happy with the shape. And I think that there will be a good starting point. So I'll now do that, repeat that on this side here, and then that'll be the starting point of the back of the seat. So that is both bits there with its first initial bit of shape added to it. So I'm going to start on the bottom one and uh, this is going to have loads of shape into this bottom area here and I'm going to get it to flow up into this back panel. So that is step one. This is my bottom anvil. Um, the striking face is completely flat but the anvil uh, has a slight bit of shape. This is number two in a set of nine I have. So if I just put the square on it and get that in the center, it just has an ever so slight crown to it. So, and that small crown there has the ability to shape and add, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, that much shape from an almost flat surface. So used in the right manner, you don't need to go and jump to like a number seven like that. There's absolutely no need you can generate so much shape from a flat uh, anvil. The most I'll probably go to is probably number three or number four on this. So if I just hold that up again, just a very small amount of shape in there. And that's all that's needed. So this will be done up with a very small gap. This will go up and down and it's a hammer blow, which then um, stretches the metal and then raises, which creates the shape. So and repeated at a very high speed, then generates a shape like that. And that's what I'm after.
actually stop there. That is about 30 seconds worth. And you can see how much shape has been generated by just that small, well, very quick bit of usage. It generates so much shape very quickly. It's a lot quicker than the English wheel. Just leave these little marks, but I really like that. That's just a way of, you know, witness marks. It's a, a bit of character in the panel. I quite like that. I think we live in a world where we have to have everything so shiny. Um, so it's quite nice to sort of see the witness marks in the panel and uh, just see how it was made. So I'll crack on with that now because there's plenty to do. Okay, so now I've got that pretty much roughly the, the shape I want. This is, as I said, like first pass, got both sides pretty equal. I'm gonna just raise the center section there. So obviously your legs go either side, just tucks you in a bit more. So I'm now gonna reverse the panel and raise it this way. So I'm gonna put it through using the same uh, die, bottom die, and literally just raise this area up through there. Okay, so that's kind of part one of the rear section. That's probably taken me, I don't know, 20 minutes, 25 at a push. Um, hopefully you can see what I'm trying to do with that little section in the middle. Um, but just to sort of get it across, all that shape there has been generated with a very shallow radius um, uh, die. A very small amount of uh, uh, shape in that die and used like this it's created all that shape in that panel hopefully it comes across in the light and you can see all of that but this is just sort of part one of the of the bottom section so I'm now gonna go start putting shape into my back panel then I'll bring the two together and then I'll start making that shape flow through both of them uh, so this is my first initial bit of shape, so I shall go and repeat that process on the back panel now. Um, so far to get it to this this stage it's probably taken me about 10 minutes um, so not long at all um, I know it's all sort of splayed out a little bit but once I'm happy with my initial shape I can then start you know forming the edges back round and uh, making them a bit tighter but let's get all this shape into it first and then I can really sort of hone in the, the, the shape that I uh, one at the end but now i'm just going to flip it over stretch here and get a nice sort of flowing reverse curve at the back of the seat okay so i started putting the reverse in and to be honest it didn't look very nice uh not as nice as i had in, uh imagined it would be 
So I scrapped that idea. I started uh, adding a bit more shape in here and then I've just put a slight reverse at the end. I think it looks a lot nicer um, and just flows a lot better for the seat. You know, I haven't got a, I'm not following a set pattern, you know, so I can change this as I, as I go along. Um, I'm not using any profiles or anything like that to check uh, from side to side. I'm literally just uh, trusting my judgment. Uh, I've got a, a bright light above me. I, every now and then I lift the panel up, check to see if there's any sort of like wobbles in it. Um, rub my hand over it, uh, wipe the oil off and feel for the, the highs and lows. Uh, and just raise the lows and then just wash out the, the highs. So basically what I mean by washing out is when I put the panel in, I'm just moving it around. I want that high area to like, it's all the excess material. So I want that to just sort of disappear out the panel. So I'll move it around and then I'll draw it to the edge of the panel and then I lose it. So that's how I'm getting rid of my high spots. Instead of bringing everything up to there, you can move those areas out your panel. So uh, I've literally just got to raise a little section over here and then I'll offer the two back up and then um, start figuring out how I'm going to join the two together and where I need to make my cuts. Okay, so that is the seat. Hopefully that's coming out on the camera. You can see the shape. It is all coming together now. What I think I need to do is um, shrink this a lot more and make this a smoother radius transition into here. But as you can see, it's quite nice shape so far um i'll sit in it just so you can see the proportions of it okay so fits me quite nicely You've got to think if it's got padding and that in it as, as well don't want it to be too narrow but it's quite a nice position what i might do is just bring the two panels slightly closer together so there's a bit more support you know but as a whole I think that's a pretty good start okay so I've got it all clamped into place set at the angle I want so now that is ready to scribe through there trim that down and get a weld on it Okay, slightly different setter. Um, I'm at work now, on my lunch break, and um, I'm gonna weld the bucket seat up. The reason why I'm here is my Artec welder is playing up at the moment. So I've brought it here to weld up. Uh, I've got the same machine here. So I'll be welding this on about 65 amps uh, using a pure rod, uh, which is 99.5% aluminium, 0.5% silicone and that allows you to hammer the weld up afterwards. It's a really soft weld, uh, rod um, and makes a nice neat uh, joint, flows really nicely, easy to weld, um, easy to hammer up, doesn't crack. So that's what I recommend for body work. And uh, that's pretty much it. So I'll get this welded and yeah, show you how I do it. Okay, so that's the seat all welded up. I have literally just got to fill the hole in there. I'm gonna 
turn it over and I'm literally just going to melt the penetration through then that will prevent it from cracking um, it's very unlikely to crack but I do this on all my welds on the panels um, I just fuse the back side of it in and I normally have a pretty good finish with it Okay, so I'm going to wrap this video up here. So it's going to be a two part, otherwise it'll just be too long. Um, in the next video, I'll hammer form all this weld, uh, dress that down, add a bit more shape to it, uh, finalize the shape uh, and where I'm going to put my wide edge and then do that. So there's plenty to do in the next one. So please come back for that. Um, I want to give a, a shout out to Doug and Bob who both donated to the channel. Um, they're the only two people since doing this that have ever donated. So a huge thumbs up and thank you um, I've already put it into a new tool and that should already be with me by the time this video goes out so really looking forward to that and thank you for your support if you do want to support the channel um, please go over to the PayPal link that I've got in the description and uh, go over to Instagram if you have, don't follow me on there so that's it for this uh, video thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one ciao